Wednesday, 10th August 2022. Welcome to Evening Prayer on Wednesday in Proper 14. I rejoiced when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Stay with us, Lord, for the evening draws on and the day is almost over. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, 
May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 121 to 144. Psalm 119, verses 121 to 144. I have done what is just and right. Do not deliver me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant's good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes have failed from watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness and teach me your statutes. I am your servant, grant me understanding, that I may know your decrees. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have broken your law. Truly, I love your commandments more than gold and precious stones. I hold all your commandments to be right for me, all parts of falsehood I abhor. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and I pant, I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your will. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your continent shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed, tear, shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. You are righteous, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. You have issued your decrees with justice and in perfect faithfulness. My indignation has consumed me, because my enemies forget your words. Your word has been tested to the utmost, and your servant holds it dear. I am small and of little account. 
Yet I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is an everlasting justice, and your law is the truth. Trouble and distress have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. The righteousness of your decree is everlasting. Grant me understanding that I may live. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Second Samuel, chapter 14, verses 21 to 33. Second Samuel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 21. Then the king said to Joab, Very well, I grant this. Go, bring back the young man Absalom. Joab prostrated himself with his face to the ground and did obeisance and blessed the king. And Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, my lord the king, in that the king has granted the request of his servant. So Joab set off, went to Gersha, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. The king said, Let him go to his own house. He is not to come into my presence. So Absalom went to his own house and did not come into the king's presence. Now all in Israel, there was no one to be praised so much for his beauty as Absalom. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. When he cut the hair of his head, for at the end of every year he used to cut it, when it was heavy on him, he cut it. He weighed the hair of his head, two hundred shekels by the king's weight. There was born to Absalom three sons and one daughter, whose name was Tamar. She was a beautiful woman. So Absalom lived two full years in Jerusalem without coming to the, into the king's presence. Then Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king, but Joab would not come to him. He sent a second time, but Joab would not come. Then he said to his servants, Look, Joab's field is next to mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab rose and went to Absalom at his house and said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? Absalom answered, Look, I sent word to you. Come here that I may send you to the king with a question. Why have I come from Gersham? It would be better for me to be there still. Now let me go into the king's presence. If there is guilt in me, let him kill me. Then Joab went to the king and told him, and he summoned Absalom. So he came to the king and prostrated himself with his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God my Saviour, for you have looked with favour on your lowly servant. 
From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, has done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second lesson, a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. Acts, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, brothers and sisters, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the Word. When they said what they said, pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephan, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, to, together with Philip, Pocorus, Nicanor, Timon, Pominus, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of them who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Sicilia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him and seized him and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, 
a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Colic for proper 14. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grant to your servants, O God, to be set on fire with your love, to be strengthened by your power, to be illuminated by your Spirit, to be filled with your grace, and to move on with your help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayer for strength. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May your salvation, O Lord, be always ours, this day and forevermore. Amen. A prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow. 
that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. And above all, we pray for your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.